All right, so question number six is um, one that would not be directly assessed on your final exam or honestly anything at a college level, but it's one of those underlying skills questions that uh, there's pieces that will show up in other questions, but it in and of itself would probably not uh, be highlighted. Anyway, um, what you want to remember is that there's a bunch of rules of exponents. And, and one of those rules of exponents is if you multiply two things that have exactly the same base, then what you do is you add those two exponents. Um, connected skill, if let's say you had x to the sixth divided by x to the two, you get x to the fourth. Um, when you divide things with the same uh, base, you subtract their exponents. And in this case, since the x to the sixth was on top, it would uh, lead to x to the fourth. But if it had been at the bottom, it would have been, if these had been reversed, it would be one over. Um, another little fact is that x to the third raised to the fourth is not x to the seventh. And sometimes people get these two rules mixed up. It's x to the twelfth. And finally, Anything you, anytime you have uh, an exponent that is negative, that makes it a reciprocal. So that's kind of our little set of rules that govern those things. Um, so when we look at number six, like I said, it wouldn't be directly on the assessment, but there may be pieces of it that show up here and there. So there's a couple of things that I personally like to do. Um, when I look at this, I would have a negative four times negative two, according to the rule that I have listed over here, you multiply those two exponents. So that would be X to the eighth. Right here, I'd have Y to the minus 10, but like right here, what I mentioned is if you have Y to the minus 10 that is on top, I'm actually gonna put that Y to the 10th on the bottom. That's these two pieces. Now in the denominator, I have X to the 12th. I'm gonna leave that exactly where it is. And here I have Y to the minus six as on the bottom. But because I end up with a negative exponent, that's going to make that y to the sixth on top. Now, you'll notice that I waited until the bitter end to deal with this three to the minus two, because that is actually a part that people kind of struggle with. So notice that according to this rule right here, this would actually be three to the minus two is actually one over three to the two. So that actually makes it a nine in the bottom. And now we're pretty much set to go because all I have left to do is exercise this last little rule right here, which says if there's eight X's on top and 12 of them in the bottom, that's going to leave X to the fourth in the denominator and Y to the fourth similarly in the denominator. And I did this on purpose because what happens if nothing's left on top? Well, you don't want to put a zero because that would make the entire expression zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a one there. All right. So for problems seven and eight, it starts with just the simple ideas. Can you rearrange this thing? Uh, these are both nice, simple lines, but can we do something to make sure that those are actually set in a form where we can de determine the slope? So everybody has their own way to do that. But in this first problem, I would probably subtract three X from both sides, and then I would divide both sides by negative two. And be very careful about watching your pluses and minuses there dividing both sides by a negative two piece by piece by piece is going to make a slope of three halves. That's very important because down here, when we look at number seven B, um, they gave me a point, boom, and they gave me a slope, boom, right here, three halves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Y minus the Y value and X minus the X value. And by the way, what I'm doing is I'm utilizing what we call the point slope form, which is the one we've been using um, through the first part of the year. I haven't seen it in a little bit in our class, but then remember that if ever lines are parallel, then they have exactly the same slope. This uh, two over negative seven is supposed to be part of this question. I just kind of space things out a little bit. Now in uh, the last question here, first thing I need to do is isolate. And I, I did this on purpose to say that it really doesn't matter what side your Y is on as long as it is isolated. And that's gonna make a slope of three quarters. So just like this last problem, if we do the Y minus the Y value and X minus the X value, you notice that's a plus seven because I subtracted negative seven. But then you want to remember that in slopes, if you want perpendicular, you need an opposite and a reciprocal. So three fourths would become negative four thirds. And that would finish that problem.
Now, frequently I do tell you guys could go ahead and graph these things on your calculator and whatnot to validate that you did okay. But um, one thing that's a little bit interesting is if you graph this original problem right here and you graph this one, which would require you to at least move this two to the other side to get Y by itself, you would actually see that these are in fact parallel. However, right here when you graph this, the default window of your calculator, you'll notice it's a rectangle, not a perfect square. So quite frequently, um, the calculator doesn't look exactly perpendicular. So if you were to take the time to do that, you'll notice that right down here is zoom square. Zoom square actually makes a square on the calculator look like a square. So it, it kind of tweaks the resolution. So um, if you were to graph it, it would actually look perpendicular because it wouldn't have it longer and, and wider. So that's not a bad thing to do sometimes if you have the time. Okay, and then last question is number nine. And you notice it, it says right here, if it's not linear or exponential, you don't have to do it. So we're going to keep that in mind. So to recall, an exponential equation should look like something like this. Exponential should be y equals a times b to the x. And that means, remember, an exponent is a constant multiplication by something, which sometimes people say, or division, but really dividing by two is the same thing as multiplying by one half. So often we just say constant multiplication. And in the same way, a line or a linear situation is like an mx plus b, there's a constant addition in the problem. And again, some people say, or subtraction, but in reality, subtraction is just adding a negative number. So we can really think of this as always multiplying by something, and this is always adding some value, be it a positive number or a negative number. So as such, let's take a look at what we have. What I noticed, this number is not something that I readily recognize, but right here I do see something. Um, it subtracts 18, but this is not subtracting 18, so that's not the pattern that I'm looking for. What I see is 6 is exactly 1 fourth of 24, and in fact, so is this, and so is, is 96, a quarter of 384. So what I know is that I've got 1 fourth raised to the x as my root story. So I'm looking for a times b to the x, where b is one-fourth. That's my constant multiplier. And of course, a is my initial condition in any exponential, which happens to be 384. In this problem, we were very fortunate. It was all laid out for us. Um, in the next one down, um, let's see. Well, 6 times 4, that's not times 4. Huh. So that's not, it's not exponential because we do not have the same uh, multiplication throughout the story. Um, if I add 18, is this adding 18? Well, no, so it's not linear either. We do not have a constant difference. So it's neither one of those. So it says if it is not, you don't have to find the equation. So I'm just gonna say neither right here. Now in reality is if you actually looked at it, this does add uh, 26, this one does add 10. So you'll notice that we added 10, then we added 18, then we added 26. You'll notice the difference of eight within the differences. You can kind of tell this is an algebra two idea. This was a quadratic and we could actually find it, but this time we're not gonna bother to take the time because it does take a while. And my last problem, not surprisingly, you had your exponential up here. Up at the top, that's going to mean this guy is probably going to be linear because, you know, I gave you one of each. And you have to be a little bit careful. So you notice that we're subtracting three or we could say adding negative three. But you'll also notice that these numbers are moving by twos. So it appears that if you kind of think of this as X and this as Y, with slope being delta Y over delta X, then it looks like your y's are changing by negative three, while my x's are changing by two. So it looks like we have some kind of a negative three halves x plus b. And if I could find what the zero term is, I'd love it, but it's kind of not evident within the stuff. And, and I know that we could back our way back and see what happens, but probably the smarter play 
is to just pick a number of our choice. And so I think I'm just going to pick the number 5 and 16. I just kind of like that one. So I'm going to plug in 16 for y, and I'm going to plug in 5 for x. And that turns into a fairly simple problem because all I have left to do to get b by itself is add 15 halves to both sides. So if we took 16 and we added 15 halves, now I like to hit math enter enter to make it a fraction. So that's 47 halves is b. So it looks like I have the equation negative 3 halves x plus 47 halves would be my nice simple linear equation. But we do have to honor something. This problem wasn't y versus x. It was like north versus west or something like that, n versus w. So all of the x's or my independent variables, I'm going to make n's. And my dependent w is going to be right here. And this would be my value. And of course, it would be really, really smart on these kind of problems, especially just to make sure it's so easy. You don't want to make simple mistakes. So I would highly, highly recommend typing it in. And again, your calculator is going to force you to use X's and Y's, not W's and P's or something like that. But if you go to your table, you can validate your answers very rapidly because if the inputs 0, 1, 2, and 3 produce the outputs that they gave me, it's pretty obvious that we did okay, and we did. So moving a little bit deeper down, come on in. Um, this last one right here, again, I'm going to stick with x's and y's, but if we did y equals negative 3 halves x plus 47 halves, and I would go to my table. This is a little harder table because it didn't go by perfect numbers, but 3 Oops, I didn't hit that number right. Three, five, seven, and nine does appear to generate the table that we wanted to generate. And so that kind of ends the prerequisites for us today. All right. So I'll see you back in class. Bye-bye.